Hi, this is Matt with AppliancePartsPros.com. Today we'll be showing you how to repair your appliance. Remember, anytime you work on an appliance, make sure it's unplugged or the circuit breakers are off so there's no chance of electrocution. In this video, we're going to show you how to change out the Whirlpool refrigerator water inlet valve. It's going to be a very easy repair. It should only take a few minutes to show you how to do it. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can click on the link below or get it at AppliancePartsPros.com. When you open up the package, you're going to get the new inlet water valve the instructions, some quarter inch tubing, and a plastic union. The main reason you'll be changing out the Whirlpool refrigerator water inlet valve is that one of the solenoids went bad and it's not allowing water to come into either the ice maker or the dispenser. Whether you have this type of piercing valve which is attached to a water line and it has the handle that you turn to shut the water off or if you have an actual valve built into the wall with the copper line coming off and going to the refrigerator you need to make sure that you turn the water all the way off before you work on the refrigerator. In order to change the part, we're going to take the back cardboard panel off the refrigerator. It's held in by a few screws. With all the screws out, we can pull the panel out and set it aside. First thing we have to do is take the copper tubing off that actually supplies water to the valve. This one's a half inch wrench. All you have to do is loosen it up and pull it off. You want to make sure you put a towel down to catch any water that may drip out so you don't get a mess on the floor. Now that we have that disconnected, the only thing that really holds the water valve in is these two quarter inch screws. Once we have those two screws out, we can pull the valve out. Now that we have the water valve out, we can pull the wire connectors off. There are two different sizes, uh, 3 16 terminals and quarter inch terminals, so you can't mix them up when you put them back in. We'll just get these out of the way. And now we can disconnect the water lines. You have two different sizes, 5 16 and quarter inch, and quarter inch and 5 16 So just remember that the opaque ones go down here, and the ones that go to the water filter go back here. Again, make sure you got a towel down to catch any of this water that's going to come out. It's the same half inch wrench to take off the compression fitting. Okay, this one we're going to leave connected because this part of the valve is not changed out with this part of the valve. These two are connected just by being pressed in, uh, one piece pressed into the other piece. So you're going to have to take a pretty big screwdriver and get it pried apart. As you can see, they're kind of pressed onto each other. So if it's a little bit tougher than just wiggling it apart, you may have to get a big screwdriver and get it off. Here's the old water valve next to the new water valve. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can get it at AppliancePartsPros.com. The main thing you want to note is that on the new one, the wire connections, the solenoid connections are actually on the back, and it has what they call push to lock fitting. So it doesn't have the screw in type threads, what you have to do is push the water line directly into the valve. There's no nut to tighten it down. Inside the fitting there's four metal teeth and an o-ring. When you push the tube in, you have to make sure that it's cut off completely square and there's no rough edges around it. And then you push it in and pull on it to lock it into place. Alright, so the main difference like we just talked about is that the old style water valves had these screw on compression fittings and the new ones are just press and lock fittings. So the main problem is is that a lot of times these nuts are stuck on here after long years and even if you can get them off there's indentations in the pipe that won't seal on the new o-ring. So what we have to do for all these tubes is take a razor blade and cut them off nice and straight with no sharp edges. Don't waste a lot of tubing, you don't have a lot of extra. Take a look at it, make sure you have it 
90 degrees. If it's off, make sure you trim it. Once you have it nice and straight and smooth, all you have to do is push it into the valve and it'll lock into place. Now on these type of fittings, if you have to take them out or disconnect them for any reason, you have to push on the fitting ring and then pull the tube out. When you push this ring down, it releases the four teeth that are inside here so you can pull the water line out. So we'll go ahead and put this one back in. Make sure it seats in all the way and give it a little tug to make sure it's locked in there. Next we have to do the same thing for the 5 16th inch water line. Just cut it off right below the nut and then look at it to make sure you got it trimmed so it's 90 degrees across and then you can stick that one in too. Okay, the last one we have to do is the other quarter inch line, which had the compression fitting on it, the metal one. So same thing, we need to cut this off. Make sure you have a nice square cut. And then we need to push it in and lock it into place. And again, if you don't think you got it in right, you need to pull it out. Same thing, you press on this ring and pull the hose out. Don't try to pull the hose out, otherwise you'll destroy all the teeth and the O-ring in there. This particular hose, we didn't change or take off, but we do have to make sure that it goes in between these two hoses. So route it in there so the hose goes in here, so we can mount it later when we put the valve in. Now that we have the water lines hooked up, but before we put everything back in, we're going to reconnect the wires. Um, the instructions actually say if you have any problems rerouting the wire or anything like that, that you can disconnect this block up here and move the wires around and then reconnect this block. But if you put the wires on before you put the valve back in, you shouldn't have any problem. So if we look at the terminals on the inside, we can see that the purple one has the small terminals and the white one has the big. So the purple is going to go on the green. Now that we have the water lines and the connectors all hooked up, we can push this back in and mount the water valve. Remember that the valve is now going to be two pieces. It's not going to be stuck together like it was on the original one. So the screws are actually going to hold the two pieces together once you tighten them down. Okay. Now that we have the water valve in and everything is installed, reconnect the water supply line and then turn the water back on. And we're going to run two to three gallons through the dispenser on the front door to one, flush the system, and two, make sure that you don't have any leaks down here. If you have any leaks, then you have to take the valve out, take the tubing out, check and see if it's damaged in any way, and try to reseat it properly. So once you have everything in, make sure you run the water through the dispenser for two to three gallons to get any bubbles and stuff out of the water lines and to make sure that you don't have any leaks. All right, now that we have the water valve in and we've run some water through it and you made sure there's no leaks, we can put the back cover on just slides up under the slip and then we put the screws in to hold it in place. Now that you're done repairing your refrigerator, you can plug it back in, make sure that it starts to cool off and that the temperatures return to normal. Thanks for joining us for another successful repair brought to you by AppliancePartsPros.com. Check out our other repair videos on our site, Facebook, and YouTube.